You know what's worse than when government officials, one, refuse to hold criminal politicians accountable, and two, fail to provide any transparency about why they are refusing to hold criminal politicians accountable? Well, what's worse is when three, they're deceptive about the whole thing. Let's talk about what we are learning about New York District Attorney Alvin Bragg killing the criminal investigation into Donald Trump. Because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So it looks like New York District Attorney Alvin Bragg has all but killed the criminal investigation into Donald Trump for financial crimes that career prosecutors in that office believe Donald Trump committed in New York State. And that's bad enough. But in a piece that I wrote for MSNBC Daily that posted today, I talked about how DA Bragg uh, may very well have added insult to injury. Here's what I said. On January 1st, the new district attorney, Alvin Bragg, took over the Trump criminal investigation. But just when it seemed like the investigative circle was tightening around Trump, something of a legal bombshell dropped. The two top prosecutors abruptly and simultaneously resigned from the New York District Attorney's office. Mark Pomerantz and Carrie Dunn left behind a case they had been working for years. Now, how did District Attorney Bragg respond to the resignation of these two top Trump prosecutors? Well, his office issued statements saying that it was, quote, not true that the office had abandoned the case against Trump, saying that the investigation is ongoing, and even saying that he had appointed a new top prosecutor to the Trump case. Well, that was a relief, right? I guess, you know, Trump probably will be charged. I guess Alvin Bragg is telling us it's full speed ahead in the Trump investigation. But there was this pesky problem that was bothering me. Alvin Bragg was refusing to release the resignation letters of Pomerantz and Dunn, the two top Trump prosecutors. And he was claiming that if he released the letters, it would compromise the ongoing investigation into Trump and it would release, quote, too much information about the case. Well, here's what I said about that when I heard it. Bragg's stated reason to decline to release the resignation letters rings hollow. Are we to believe that the two top prosecutors included intimate investigative details in their resignation letters? Or is it far more likely that Bragg refuses to release them because the letters are deeply critical of Bragg's treatment and perhaps neglect of the case? Well, now we have an answer to that question because the New York Times just published a deep dive piece on Alvin Bragg's handling of the Trump investigation and what prompted the two lead prosecutors to resign. The headline of that piece, how the Manhattan District Attorney's investigation into Donald Trump unraveled. And the article talks about a meeting between Alvin Bragg, the two top prosecutors, and some others from the New York District Attorney's office. And the article reads in part, the meeting on January 24 started with a series of events that brought the investigation of Mr. Trump to a sudden halt and late last month prompted Mr. Pomerantz and Mr. Dunn to resign. It also represented a drastic shift Mr. Bragg's predecessor, Cyrus R. Vance Jr., had deliberated for months before deciding to move toward an indictment of Mr. Trump. Mr. Bragg, not two months into his tenure, 
reverse that decision. The article continues, Once Bragg told Mr. Pomerantz and Mr. Dunn that he was not prepared to authorize charges, they resigned. Explaining the resignation to his team of prosecutors in a meeting a day later, Mr. Dunn said he felt he needed to disassociate myself with this decision because I think it was on the wrong side of history. On the morning of February 22nd, Mr. Bragg notified them, the prosecutors, of his decision. He did not want to continue the grand jury presentation. In other words, he did not want to continue the case against Donald Trump. Now, Alvin Bragg is indeed on the wrong side of history, and he added insult to injury by failing to be straight with the people of New York, and for that matter, with the people of the nation. And like I said, the only thing worse than a DA who refuses to hold criminal politicians accountable and refuses to be transparent about that decision is one who deceives the people he took an oath to serve and to represent faithfully. So it appears the criminal case against Donald Trump for the financial crimes he undoubtedly committed in the state of New York may be at an end, but that doesn't mean all hope is lost because there are far more consequential crimes to our nation committed by Donald Trump in the state of Georgia when he tried to steal the Georgia state election. That's being investigated criminally by Fawny Willis, Fulton County DA, in the Department of Justice. Undoubtedly, there are investigations ongoing into the insurrection. We know that. And that investigation must include Donald Trump's criminal culpability for inciting the insurrection. But there's no two ways about it. Today was a bad day for the home team. Because justice matters. Hang in there, friends. Please stay safe. Please stay tuned. And I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.